Determine the force acting along each of the three struts needed to support the 500 kilogram block. Here's my 500 kilogram block. The first thing I have to do here is clearly draw the free body diagram. Anytime you have an equilibrium problem like this, you're going to want to start by drawing this free body diagram. In this case, I have forces acting up from each of the three struts. And the weight. Now the weight is in the negative k direction. Each of these acts from A to D, from A to C, and from A to B. Now notice I picked these directions. You can pick them to be in a different direction if you'd like, and you'll have minus signs in your answer. Once you've drawn your free body diagram, it's not complete unless you have directions. In this case, what I need to do is, if I say it's going to go from A to D, I need to define what A and D are. A is 0, 3, 2.5, D is minus 1.25, minus 2, 0, and then the 2 in the middle are B, B is at the origin, that one's easy, 0, 0, 0, and C is at 0.7520. 0. Be careful. Make sure that you can get these, because if you can't get the points, then you really can't get the problem correct. Once you've got a correct free body diagram, the next thing to do is to list your forces in Cartesian form. It's very helpful to go ahead and make a list so that you have all of your forces written down. It helps enormously when you're actually doing your equilibrium equations in a minute. The weight is an easy one to do. That's already in the minus k direction. That's in its Cartesian form. The others all go from one point to another. As soon as you've got magnitude along some line that goes from one point to another, you're going to use a position vector and then find a unit vector and multiply. So our position vectors for each of B, C, and D go from A to D, from A to C, and from A to B. Now remember that when you're doing from A to D, you're going to do 2 minus from. So when I'm going from A to D, I've got D minus A. That gives me minus 1.25i, minus 5j, and minus 2.5k. Never forget, you've got to check and make sure you're doing this right. Is this going in the negative k direction? Yes, it would be, so that's okay. And the other two go from a to c, which is minus 0.75i, minus 5j, and minus 2.5k. Again, in the negative k direction. And b is has nothing in the i direction, minus 3j, minus 2.5k. If you pick a different direction for your arrows on your free body diagram, you get different signs on your position vector. These are the position vectors. To find the unit vectors, we have to find the, the magnitudes of each of these. So you take the square root of each of the terms squared. So 1.25 squared, 5 squared, and 2.5 squared. Add them up, take the square root. You've got 5.7282, 5.6403, and 3.9051. So now let's list the forces. W is minus W in the k direction, which in this case is 500 times 9.81 in the minus k direction. Remember, you cannot say 500 because that would be a mass and not a... Ah, weight, or a force. This is 0 in the i direction, plus 0 in the j direction, minus 4,905 in the k direction. B comes from RB, so this is going to be some unknown magnitude times 0i, minus 3j, minus 2.5k, but you can't use just the position vector, you have to use the unit vector. So divide by its magnitude, 3.9051, which is equal to that. C comes from the position vector for C times its unknown magnitude divided by the magnitude of the position vector, so that you have a unit vector, and so does D. The greatest thing about writing all of your forces in Cartesian form like this, especially if you list them all in a nice table format, 
is that you can write the equilibrium equations, the sum of the forces in the x, the sum of the forces in the y, and the sum of the forces in the z directions, very easily, simply by adding up the columns. So our first column would be 0i from the w vector, 0i from the b vector, 0.13297c from the c vector, and minus 0.21822d from the d vector, and those things have to equal zero. For our sum of the forces in the y direction, we do actually get a b component and a c component and a d component. So this is a fully populated row or column. The sum of the forces in the x direction has four terms because you also get a w. You can solve these with any kind of solution solver you'd like, or you can substitute one into the other, however you'd like to get it. You do b equals minus 19,155, c is 10,375, and d is 6,321.8. b is negative. That means that when we're going to answer the question, we can actually say we guessed wrong when it comes right down to it. We guessed that in our free body diagram up here, B was going to act from A to B. Clearly, that's not right. We know that because we have a negative sign. So B has to act from B to A instead of the other way around. While D acts from A to D and is 6.32 kilonewtons. B is going to act from B to A instead of the other way around. And C acts from A to C and gives you 10.4 kilonewtons. You could just as easily have answered this as from A to B as we defined it in the free body diagram with a negative sign. Either of those will work just fine.